this is your first time watching the channel. Uh, this is a, a channel where I talk about web development and the tools and software that goes around web development that helps us to do that job day to day. Today I'm talking about the Colmac keyboard layout or alternative layouts for QWERTY. Regardless of what metric you choose to measure it, QWERTY is just not a very effective keyboard layout. You can try it with code, it's not the best. You can try it with prose, it's not the best. You can try it with the text of the email that you just sent and it's almost certainly not the best layout. So it seems pretty obvious, however you want to analyze QWERTY, that it's not the best layout for typing things. So the question is, how did it become the de facto standard keyboard layout that we all use? It's alleged it came into being because it was a layout by which they could space the keys, the mechanical keys in old typewriters, further apart and stop them getting jammed. I've researched that a little bit and I think the evidence for that's a little anecdotal so I couldn't categorically agree with that and, and say that's how it came about. But it's kind of unimportant really. What is important at this point is that QWERTY is the standard for keyboard layouts and it remains the standard just because the installed user base is so huge. But that doesn't mean there aren't other layouts that you could adopt that would give you a better layout for the things that you're typing day to day. I think it's very important to say as well at this point that whilst you might find a keyboard layout that's better, QWERTY is almost certainly good enough. It would be crazy of me to suggest that a keyboard layout might be holding you back from some greatness. I don't think that's the case at all. This is just about making an optimization that might pay you off in terms of comfort and speed in the years and months to come. I can't even recall what made me start looking for alternative keyboard layouts. But over this last Christmas break, I got to wondering about whether a different keyboard layout might be worth investigating. And the kind of, um, the deal I made with myself, if you like, was the fact that I thought, well, if I did learn an alternative key out layout, one that was more um, that was more economical, that would pay me off in the many, many years, hopefully, I have left to carry on typing away. And the truth is, I've always been quite slow at typing. I mean, obviously, I've got by absolutely fine, but I've noticed whenever I've tested my typing speeds, the accuracy is always very low so any speed that I had it included a lot of deleting words and, and retyping them so it was quite um, an uneconomical way to type stuff so even on a good day I reckon uh, my average accuracy was something around 80 to 85 percent which is really quite poor in the scheme of things. Now I'm generally quite guilty of spending a lot of time messing around with things that I should probably leave well alone. It's, I find it easy to get into time sinks where something will pique my interest and I can spend hours and hours researching it or trying it out only to find that it was a complete waste of time or I could be spending my time better just actually making something. Intuitively felt a lot like one of those things. It was going to be a bit of a rabbit hole and it would be a bit of a, a time sink if I'm honest. The truth is I kind of lied to myself. Um, I had a, an injury just over a year ago where I lost one of my fingers and I made a kind of deal with myself that this would be a way of making up the lack of speed from having a missing digit, which is really a bit of a lie really. It was my ring finger and it didn't really affect my typing speed all that much, but it's amazing the lies that we all tell ourselves when we have something we want to do. There's a few alternate keyboard layouts. There's Dvorak, there's Colmac, there's Workman. I'm going to save you a lot of time and say that the single biggest gain that you'll make with keyboard layouts is moving away from QWERTY. Whether you choose Workman over Colmac or Colmac over Dvorak is fairly academic. The big gains are in just switching away from QWERTY because all of the other ones are so much better than QWERTY, the difference is kind of negligible. Now I decided to give Colmac a shot mostly because for me, it seemed to have the least amount of keys moved around, and crucially, the C and V keys, the bottom left-hand area of the keyboard, was left largely as it was, and that was because I do a lot of copy and paste, you know, basically without copy, paste, and stack overflow, my career is finished. So, Colmac won me over in that regard. 
the important thing to say is obviously do your own research and then choose Golmac. So once Boxing Day was done with, I decided I was going to start out learning Colmac and touch typing on an ortholinear split keyboard in for a penny. There are presets for Dvorak and Colmac layouts in all the major OS's so switching to those layouts is actually pretty straightforward but that obviously leaves you with problems on the physical side of the keyboard. Now some people go as far as if they, laptops for example they'll actually flick the, the chiclet keycaps off and rearrange them and that's one way to go. If you're touch typing it's not so much of a big deal because you shouldn't be looking at the, the alpha keys anyway and if you're keeping everything else in the same place it's really just a case of remapping your mind to where those keys are. You might find it easy to print off the layouts of, of Colmac or Dvorak, whatever you choose, stick it on the bottom of your monitor say. The key is to just sort of not look down at your keyboard at all and just try and get those key positions mentally mapped. Now I was lucky enough to have a keyboard or two where you can actually pull off the keycaps and rearrange them. Mechanical keyboards obviously this sort of thing is is easy peasy. If you've got a keyboard um, that will run on QMK or something like an Ergo Dox EZ or a Moonlander which is the thing that I've been using you can do all that very simply move the keys around to wherever you want them and obviously that makes it simpler because not only are you... why does that make it simpler? Yeah, that makes it simpler because it just does. I tend to not use a laptop. I've got a laptop here but I don't touch the keys. I tend to use a, a separate mechanical keyboard where it's very easy to swap the keycaps around and have it match the layout. However, one thing I would absolutely say is even if you can swap the keycaps around, make sure you're left with homing keys on what is currently on a normal keyboard, keyboard the F and J keys, or where, where the index keys will be, just in case, uh, just to show you what I mean on something like this. Um, homing keys tend to be these ones with a, a slightly different sort of scoop on them, or, now let's see on this one, you can see, hopefully you can see here, you can just see on that F key there, the homing bar and that's that's the wrong legend for what that key is on my on my Colmat layout here that's an N and the, the homing key on the left hand side which I've got a legend of a J on is actually a T but that lets you get your hands back in the right place as you're typing away. I've tried touch typing before with QWERTY and it's just never stuck I don't know if it's just because the bad habits are so ingrained and the odd thing was switching to um, a completely different layout and a different keyboard with a different sort of layout. The, the one that I've learned on is one where you've got these linear keys as opposed to something like this one where the, the keys are staggered. Um, and I think because I changed everything all in one go it was actually in a weird way easier for me to just remap in my mind how to use the keys. So to start off with, I used a website called KeyBR, which it's slightly different than normal um, keyboard typing tutor websites, because instead of just giving you sections of text to reprint out, to retype out, it actually gives you like sequences of pseudo English combinations of keys to get you used to very common key patterns that you get in the English language. So it's a bit weird at first, but it's great for sort of building up these patterns of muscle memory as you learn where the keys are on this new, uh, this new keyboard layout. Then after, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks of that, I started to tire of just doing that all the time. So then I went to my favorite typing testing website, which is Monkey Type, um, which is a fantastic website with loads and loads of different options. but what I started to do then is the short quotes and just having the very short sections and what I was doing is every time I made a mistake I would just bail out and restart that test and that was really just to try and get my accuracy up because 
I think one thing that I also learned is that in order to progress, you've got to be concentrating on the accuracy. Forget about the, the words per minute and just concentrate on the accuracy. I was getting hung up on the fact that the first couple of weeks I was bouncing around eight words per minute. I've not got massively quick now at all, but I don't think I would have made any progress if I'd have been obsessed about how fast I was going. I started to make more progress when I concentrated on the accuracy. Two and a half months into using Colmac now, as I record this, and I think I was probably competent coming up to two months, but I'd certainly say less than two months I was ropey. That's obviously, I'm someone in my 40s, I've got the brain elasticity of a stick, and so somebody younger who sleeps more than six hours is no doubt going to pick this up a lot quicker, but I think it's important to have realistic expectations that this is going to be something that you need some deliberate practice every day. I was doing sort of anywhere between 20 minutes, half an hour a day, either in the in the morning or in the evening, before or after work, just to try and get these patterns of muscle memory bedded into my brain. My progress was painfully slow, so much so that I really thought at one point that I just wasn't going to be able to rewire, rewire my brain to, to figure it out. But eventually, after sort of weeks and days of hacking away at it, I started to notice I was able to just write stuff and it was when I was consciously thinking about writing things that it would go wrong. When I was able to kind of zone out, I found I was able to type. I was starting to be able to type with Colmac, um, but it took a lot of time to get there. I think that Colmac is obviously better than QWERTY. If you just have a go of a QWERTY layout and then compare writing the same thing with a, a Colmac layout, even though you're so much slower, you can feel that the keys are a lot easier to get to. All the sort of commonly used keys are on that home row where your fingers would sit ordinarily and you just have lots less sort of stretching out to reach keys to form common words. Now, is that going to revolutionise your work life? No, of course not. But it is going to make it a lot more comfortable going forward for however many years you continue to type. might also be something you want to consider if you're somebody who suffers from finger pain or wrist pain from typing a lot. One thing I think definitely helped me learn Colmac was an ortholinear keyboard. And I think that's because you can see here that the, the keys are laid out in a grid as opposed to staggered. And I think just knowing what key was above and below each other key just really helped build up that mental picture of where the Colmac layout was. Some people also will tell you that an ortholinear layout is more comfortable, but I'm not convinced of that, to be honest. I certainly wouldn't say it's any worse than a staggered keyboard, but I didn't feel it was particularly more comfortable. It just helped me in terms of having a, a grid of letters as opposed to them sort of all jumbled up in a weird stagger. One other thing to consider with ortholinear layout, if you look at it and think it looks a little bit odd, if you use a full-size keyboard, you've got a number pad on that, which doesn't feel weird, does it? It's just a grid-like layout of the keys. So if you can use a, a number keyboard or you know a calculator, then there's no reason you can't use an ortholinear layout as well. Two and a bit months in, and I'm by no means a fast typer, I'm probably around 35 to 40 words per minute at the minute, but crucially, my accuracy is about 95% thereabouts, which is a big difference from anything I ever did with QWERTY, and I'm crucially, I'm not looking at the keys, I'm doing that touch typing. So I'm hoping that in the, the weeks and months ahead, as this beds in more and more into my brain, the speed will start to pick up. I mean, it's certainly fast enough to get by with. I don't feel like it's limiting me now as it, as it was at, at the beginning, but I'm not gonna be winning any typing races anytime soon. It's possible that this is just the sunk cost fallacy, but I'm not gonna be getting back to QWERTY. I'm, happy enough with Colmac for now that I'm just going to hopefully continue to use this layout for the foreseeable future. It's difficult to say whether the investment is worth it. It's certainly a significant investment and if you've got 
a big project coming up or stuff that you want to get out the door, it's probably not the right time to try and switch to Colmac. It's a massive pain in a lot of ways. And you do kind of have to, or I certainly had to refuse to go back to QWERTY just to force my mind to, to get over the hurdle. I'm pleased that I've done it, but I think that would be the same. It's the same with any challenge that you set yourself and you actually manage to achieve. But QWERTY is another problem because now when I go to a normal keyboard, it is slightly compromised. It's a little bit like trying to read a book with your grandma's glasses on or something. Um, you can do it, but that same muscle memory has, has kind of been eroded a little bit. Yet, yeah, oddly enough, when I use iOS and I do the sort of swipe around the keyboard to type texts and emails and the like, for some reason my brain has no problem with that at all. If you're thinking about trying Colmac or Dvorak or any of the other alternative keyboard layouts, here are my sort of takeaways and bullet points. Make sure that you're using homing keys in the, the index finger positions. Absolutely essential. I found it very good to track my progress at a site like KeyBR or Monkey Type. Being able to see that sort of steady graph of improvements, even if it stays flat for a long time and then sort of peaks up, being able to track your progress is quite rewarding and makes you feel like at least you're, you're moving each and every day. An ortholinear keyboard layout, if you can get your hands on one, I found that enormously useful. If you can, stop, or you should, stop looking at your alpha keys as you're typing. If you need to print out the layout, print out your layout and stick it on the, the bottom of your keyboard, but the more you can keep away from looking down at your keys as you're typing, I think the faster that you'll progress, even though it makes it very difficult at first. Concentrate on accuracy. Forget about the speed to begin with, just concentrate on the accuracy. Set some realistic expectations in your mind of how long it's going to take to learn it. I'd say two months, half an hour a day, two months. If you come in under than that, that's great. But that's I think that's a realistic sort of amount of time that you can expect to take to get this into your head. And the longer you've been alive and typing, I think the longer you can expect that period of time to take for you to switch over. I'd love to know if any of you attempt it having watched this or you've recently attempted switching to Colmac please let me know in the comments below please like and subscribe it so other people can find the video and tell us about their experiences as well